Yo, what is up, GQ? I'm Chris G, bringing you guys another video, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing a few things on camera basics. So we're going to be going over what cameras we can use, what a DSLR is, and how to use a DSLR efficiently and effectively. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little sequence. So now let's get to the nitty gritty kind of stuff that we're gonna be talking about. Just kidding. I'm not gonna go too in detail with all the crazy camera stuff because it is camera basics. I'm not gonna overwhelm you guys with like the most crazy calculations of the ISO and the shutter speed and etc. I'm just gonna make it very simple for you guys to understand. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first is what are our options, right? So we have our phones that can produce pretty good quality um, video and for, uh, photos as well, but we also have DSLRs. So like, which one do we choose? I would probably go with the DSLR. iPhone can definitely take really good footage, but it doesn't contain the files that a DSLR can contain. And especially when you want to upgrade your DSLR, um, you can shoot at 4K with raw footage and you can shoot in log as well. So those of you that don't know what log is, it pretty much just allows you to have more flexibility with the video footage. And um, yeah, I mean, it, those of you that are editors, um, it's better that way to go that route versus having an iPhone where you can be not lazy about it, but I guess if you want to just edit fast and you're not really too into like color grading and you just want to like record and then post iPhone is definitely the way to go, but for myself, it's um, it's not a go for me, so. Now, let's talk about the DSLR a little bit more in depth, now that we kind of chose which one we should go with. So, the DSLR. Yes, this is actually not my camera. Those of you that are wondering, like, how am I recording myself when there's a camera right here? Well, this is actually my dad's camera. He has the SL3 Canon, and I, have the ADD, so I'm actually gonna be switching to Sony. So those of you that are Canon users, um, I'm sorry, but let me know whether you're using Sony, Nikon, or Canon, or if you're using another brand like Fuji or whatever. But I'm gonna be talking about Canon. Well, I'm not really gonna be going too in depth with Canon. I'm just gonna go more, more basic than that. So we're actually gonna be talking about what the three main components are of a camera. So on the top of a camera, there is some presets. I, I'd call them presets. I don't know what their like their technical terms are, but you'll see one with M. That M is for manual. So that way you have complete control over your camera. That way you can just adjust any adjustments that you need to make during any time of day or shoot or location. So that is very important because following that, I'm gonna be talking about the three main components, which is the ISO, shutter speed, and the aperture. So first things first is we're gonna go with the easiest, which is the ISO. So, or should we go with the hardest? Now we'll go with the easiest. So I'm gonna set this down. So the ISO is pretty much, I guess you could say it's fake light. So let's say your quality of video or photo is too dark and you need to increase the brightness. Well, the way to do that is you increase your ISO. The better camera you have, the better, um, I guess the higher up you can go on your ISO. So usually for like a, a DSLR that's under a grand, I would probably say stay under uh, 3200. Uh, once you go past that, you can go a little bit higher, like 6400, uh, maybe even uh, around 12,000. But then if you go even further up the price, which I'm not gonna go too far, you can go higher. Pretty much the reason why you don't wanna go higher is because it'll introduce uh, noise. And those of you that don't, don't know what noise is, it's pretty much like that graininess in your footage or um, pictures that don't make the film or photo look too good. So kind of stay away from that. I mean, unless it's a look you're going for, then by all means go for it. But I personally don't want that, so. Usually you kind of just want to keep your ISO low so that way you get the best quality of footage or pictures. But yeah, that's ISO. It's pretty much just fake light. Next up is shutter speed. So shutter speed is the time that the camera opens itself. Um, sounds kind of weird, right? Yeah, but it's the, the amount of time that the, the camera's shutter opens 
um, to, in, to let in the light. So let's say I have it at 100th of a second, then it's gonna be super fast. So I always tell my friends that ask me like, what, how does the camera work? And I have to obviously tell them these three main components and then I go to the shutter speed. Usually the example I go with is, let's say you're taking a picture of a basketball player. He's going in, he's jumping really high, he's going for a dunk and someone's gonna block him, but they don't cause they suck. But yeah, he's up in the air and you're trying to take a quick photo of him. Obviously you want that shutter speed super high because you don't want it to be blurry and it's really epic shot. And then you're gonna be the one that screws it up cause you don't know what shutter speed you should have it at. So I've never actually captured a photo like this, but I would probably just be safe and probably shoot at like 500th of a second or higher. Um, but yeah, that's gonna make it very sharp and um, crisp really. It's gonna, it's gonna look nice and it's gonna be very not blurry. But because it's gonna be, um, the, the shutter speed's gonna be cranked up super high, you're gonna have to compensate because you're also, think about it this way, you're limiting the time that the light can enter your camera. So if you're limiting the time that light can enter, that means it's gonna be a darker photo or you know film or fo uh, footage. So because of that, now that you know what ISO is, you can increase the ISO and increase the um, the shutter speed as well. So that way you can compensate for those two. So now you know what the two out of the three main components are. And now for the third one, which is the aperture. So the aperture is really, it's really simple. Think of it this way, it, it creates that blurriness that everyone knows about now because the iPhone has like, I don't know, I have weird feelings about the iPhone because, well, I don't, I don't even know, does Samsung do it too? Anyway, the iPhone has a really weird aperture mechanism that it has. It like captures the subject and then it just blurs out everything else and it looks like a really bad edit. Personally, it looks like not natural to the eyes. So the way I always tell my friends is lick it like your fingers or something and then it'll like, I don't know if my camera even focused on here, but anyway, on your own time, like look at your hand or whatever, and then you'll notice that the background is just naturally gonna be blurry. So Canon and a lot of other DSLR brands um, or camera brands, uh, they did a really good job of uh, mimicking an eye. So it looks very natural when it does it. So that depth of field looks very realistic. And not only that, what it's actually doing to the camera is it's opening up the aperture, or I guess the, um, the lens or whatever you want to call it. I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna go too specific because I don't really know the, you know, the nitty gritty stuff. It's kind of pointless to know personally, but it pretty much opens up the, the camera so that way it can make it blurry. I don't know how that works, but it does. So it, um, because it's opening it up, it's letting in more light, right? So let's say you're opening a door, right? Um, let's say there's a small door and you open it you know, one person could come in at a time versus a garage door where like 20 people could go in at a time at the same time. So that's a lot of light coming in or, and if you have it really closed and it's very little light coming in. So all these three components, you know, they all correlate with the amount of light that enters the camera. So that this is why it's very important to understand how each one works. So just to recap, ISO. <clears throat> <coughs> Wow, I almost had a, I don't even know. <coughs> wow, okay, sorry about that. I don't know what just, I just had a cough attack, I guess. Anyway, let's recap. So the first one is ISO, which is fake light, right? So fake light is needed whenever it's too dark. So shutter speed is the um, the speed of the shutter, um, I guess, clo opening for the light to come in and then closing right away and that captures the image. And then third is the aperture, which is uh, how wide the camera opens up for you to take the picture. So it increases um, the amount of light that comes in. So those are the three things, guys. It's not that complicated. I know it might seem overwhelming at first, especially when you're trying to get into the hobby. And if you're watching this video and you're trying to learn more, I can guarantee you that you're gonna feel overwhelmed because I'm pretty sure you've looked up more videos as well on top of this one, because I know for myself, I looked up tons of videos before I even bought my first camera just because I wanted to know what I was buying, I wanted to know what it could do, and um, I just wanted to know the capabilities, and I wanted to be able to, I guess, 
I, I wanted to know how to use my camera before I bought it. So, And that's another thing too, it's always about how you use your camera, it's not about what camera you have because you can have the most insane camera, but if you give it to somebody that doesn't know how to use it, well it's kind of useless, right? It's like, it's yeah, it's useless. So that's the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something new. And I just hope all of you guys have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Please comment and subscribe. Peace.